Welcome to Crossroads with Neetan Shan. As you know, Crossroads is a weekly talk show dedicated to discussing a variety of topics that are relevant to the social, economic, political, and cultural advancement of Tamil Canadians. The world celebrated May Day, uh, Day for Workers just a couple of days ago. Workers' rights are human rights and must be treated as such. In Canada, we are fortunate to have many safeguards that ensure our workers a decent pay, fairness, respect, and most importantly, safety. But there's a lot more work that needs to be done to improve the conditions for all of our workers, even right here in Canada. So we are marking May Day on Crossroads with a discussion on workers' rights. To discuss this critical topic, we have three amazing activists here in the studio. Let me begin by introducing them. First, Ram Selvaraja. Uh, Ram is a union representative with OPSU. OPSU is the Ontario Public Service Employees, Employees Union. Not employers. <laughs> employees. <laughs> employees Union. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to come. And Andrea Babington. Andrea is with uh, Labour Council for York and Toronto Region. So Toronto and York Region Labour Council. And you're the Vice President with the Council, I'm assuming, right? And yeah. also you work with uh, Unite Here, which is the Hotel Workers Union Local 75. Yeah. And Beji uh, Liu. Uh, Beji is actually with Workers Action Centre and a community organizer doing amazing work, uh, particularly with non-unionized workers uh, through Workers Action Center. Thank you very much for taking the time to come. Um, so, you know, the world celebrated May Day uh, a couple of days ago, and, uh, you know, it's unfortunate sometimes, you know, we get this attention during those peak days and, and uh, remembrance days, uh, but it's an important topic for us to have a discussion on. Um, sometimes when we talk about plight of workers, we tend to look at uh, countries that are worse off and, and you know, and feel like mm -hmm. oh, poor workers. But there are a lot that needs to be done here, locally, uh, in our own country, in terms of making sure our workers are treated with respect and 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 they're safe and their their work is being rewarded. So let's start by talking a bit about uh, what the issues are currently for workers. Uh, what are some major concerns or or challenges or difficulties workers today are facing? I'll start with Ram. Sure. I think the major challenge is good quality jobs. Over and over again, we see. Uh, good high paying jobs going away. Uh, for example, manufacturing sector is pretty much wiped out in Ontario. We are seeing um, even reports such as banks such as CIBC are coming out and saying there's really no uh, permanent good job, quality jobs anymore. <clears throat> so because of that, people's standards of living are going down. There's a lot more part-time work, less full-time work. Mm -hmm. And people are having to juggle two, three jobs to uh, see that. Mm -hmm. And I think since the beginning of this year, we're beginning to see a lot of labor unrest starting with the University of Toronto student strike um, with uh, York University, now the te teachers uh, beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of other public sector workers as well coming into mm -hmm. place. So when you talk about good quality job, what, does, what defines a the good quality? Qual a good quality job is a decent wage paying job that you know you can go have a, do a 40 hour job and come home and you know have a good home and have uh, enough money for your food and education and have a decent standard of living. Not um, having to live in poverty. That's right. So we don't believe that you need to be uh, working 80 hours or two jobs to have a decent living. It should be everybody. Sh we are a half country. There's a lot of resources, lots of things available to us, but we need to make sure that the workers are treated with respect. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrea, you do a lot of organizing work through Labor Council. Um, what are some of the challenges the workers are facing when you go out and see them? Um, I think what's so interesting at, at this day and age where you find um, there are people working there, out there, but they have to be doing several jobs just to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are working and they're still in poverty. Mm -hmm. um, they are working and at the same time, they, instead of the, the kids in school, they have to also take on another full-time or part-time jobs just to, to make sure that they can afford to, to live and to, to eat. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are working and they're still going to food banks mm -hmm. as well. So we, we find as um, a lot of these workers over the years um, struggle and bargain with their employer even to raise those wages, mm -hmm. they're finding employers coming back and slashing some of those wages as well. Mm -hmm. So they're not moving up, they're, they're actually moving down, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's the difficulty with um, a lot of these workers as they take on a full-time job, we're maybe close to home, then after, after work they drive another several miles somewhere else to take on another full-time job. So oftentimes they're doing two full-time jobs in a day mm -hmm. while they, the children are just raising themselves. Mm -hmm. Because everything else around us are getting expensive, childcare to yeah. rent to mm -hmm. you know, uh, transportation and so on. 
Uh, Beji, you work uh, a lot with uh, racialized communities, um, you know, immigrant communities as well. Um, so what's the experience in terms of workers uh, from those communities, uh, the challenges that they're facing? Actually, for them, for the people working on those precarious jobs, you know, most of them are uh, immigrants, people of color, and uh, so for them, the situation even worse. As Ron and uh, Andrea described, you know, even for the unionized workers, the situation is getting tough and tough, mm -hmm. right? So for them, it's m much harder. Mm -hmm. So they take a full, uh, those uh, non-unionized workers, a lot of them so they can only find the part-times, work through temp agencies, it, uh, and also on CAIO, or sometimes we can be classified as independent contractor or self-employed. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is they don't have any protections, uh, you know. So for, for them, like, uh, go through their life, it's really very challenging, very hard, you know, two or three jobs then become like normal. Yeah. Actually, it's, uh, it's kind of the people can, sometimes the people can expect even better. Mm -hmm. it's, um, so I think the, the precarious <coughs> nature of jobs, is it being accepted as a normal thing uh, because it's being thrown as the only solution? Because we're seeing mm -hmm. numbers sometimes, uh, uh, you know, federally reported, you know, this many jobs are created. When you right. look deeper, it's, it's part-time, so temporary, precarious, right? That's right. So what we're actually doing is, for example, I think in one month, there's 35 full-time jobs that were gone, but they created 50,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. And so the net was 20,000. But those 50,000 jobs were part-time jobs, mm -hmm. right? So really, w how do you manage with that, right? And when we see, we keep hearing over and over again the statistics that the self-employed are increasing in Canada. That's simply because p employers are saying, you know what, why don't you come work for me as a contractor? Mm -hmm. So that way, they don't have any rights. They just said, tell you, you know what, uh, seven days, sorry, you're gone, or whatever the agreement is, right? Uh, I'll give you an example. I was to work with a gentleman who was on a contract work with me. Uh, his employ our employer said, you know what, yeah, we're going to renew you, you're doing such a great work and everything. Mm -hmm. So he didn't bother applying for any other things. He goes, you know, it's still the work needs to be done. And then suddenly he said, oh, uh, you know, but sorry, next Friday is going to be your last day mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we're having some funding cuts and we're going to put some projects on hold. So this gentleman didn't even have time to look for anything else, right? Mm -hmm. And he can't go anywhere because, sorry, you know, you're self-employed. Yeah, yeah, and then that doesn't warrant any of the pro protection. It doesn't protect anything, anything at all. Anything at all. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you worked with hotel workers and you, you, you're familiar with, uh, you know, organizing among hotel workers and a lot of the Tamil Canadians work in industries such as hotels and other hospitality industries and Unite here also has a lot of uh, members I think from uh, food uh, workers as well, right? Yes. So um, what's the status of workers there? Um, I think the, the challenge especially for for hotel workers and I, I mean it's everywhere we find that through the, uh, the Labor Council going out and talking to a lot of uh, union we see the, the similarity to it, but um, just uh, talking about for hotel workers, we'll find inside hotels is mostly, um, it's a multicultural group. Mm -hmm. And so the hotel pride themselves in hiring a lot of immigrants and a lot of them are new immigrants that's come in. Mm -hmm. And I, I think with the intention that a lot of them are in the country with high skill, mm -hmm. but it's not recognized. Mm -hmm. So the first place they would go to is a hotel. Mm -hmm. So um, what happened as they get in, because of language barrier, oftentimes they, they like to express, they want to express their frustration mm -hmm. or things that they need change, but it's, it's difficult doing so with each other. So they tend to stay as groups. And so uh, they, they also stay with a fear that mm -hmm. if you are, when you're in the country and you have uh, families to look after, sometimes they have, um, they're sponsoring. And as they go through the challenge, they are afraid of uh, what might happen. Do I lose the only job I have mm -hmm. for speaking up? Or, or what happened to my immigration process mm -hmm. as well? And so, especially in a hotel where the, the schedule go up and down, there's busy season mm -hmm. and there is slow season as well. So you'll find those workers oftentimes, certain time of the year, there's no work. Mm -hmm. And then they, they have to be running out to take on different jobs. and kind of competing which bo with both mm -hmm. when when both of them need those people. So mm -hmm. we get a lot of that and we also see in terms of uh, precarious work where again it, it's hard for a lot of them whether they're in a, a unionized setting or a non-union because 
a lot of time the employer tend to want to pay low wage. Mm -hmm. And for the, the hotel group, we ended up uh, taking on a, a huge fight that include unions and community just to, to send that message out there that those people deserve decent wages. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, I, I remember over the years where a lot of them used to do two full-time jobs, and then on their days off, they would go and take on another one as well. Mm -hmm. Talking about pay, um, you know, you, you do a lot of campaigns. Uh, we'll talk about the details of the campaign later, mm -hmm. but uh, are people <coughs> being paid enough? Uh, I mean, it's a rhetorical question. Okay, so that's a very good but question. One of, the, <laughs> one of the things that people are talking about is that minimum wage has started going up, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so people are saying, you know, it is making progress, but is it real progress? Are we seeing uh, that's making any impact on people's lives? I just through our previous minimum wage campaign, so we've you know, we force the government, I would say our campaign is a coalition campaign by co communities and the unions will come together. So we force the government to raise the minimum wage, but it's $11 uh, and also indexation and to the uh, cost of living, which is a, a big step forward. However, $11 itself is really low. And so if people work full time, even just single person, it's still 16% below the poverty line if you work on the $11 minimum wage. So that's why the, the, the legal wage can say that uh, people work and live in poverty. So that's really ridiculous. Yeah. That's, our, that's legal. And we're talking about saying. working poor now. Yes, the, it's working job, right? poor, yeah. right? So, so besides all those low wage, we also, uh, as we talked about, a lot of precarious mm -hmm. and also no enforcement of the labor laws, you know, very weak. Mm -hmm. And the plus that, in addition to all those problems, we also have like migrant workers. This was set up, you know, to, you know, even more worse situation they put in, the delivery by the immigration system and also our and mm -hmm. employment standards part. Which is an interesting point that Canadians are allowing a double standard for a set of humans right. to be exactly. in this country, to be treated differently, to be exploited. Completely, completely in some ways, uh, right? and, and, and that's something that we would have uh, not traditionally considered as, as Canadian you know, from, mm -hmm. from a discourse, right? And mm -hmm. now um, the only stronger opposition we are seeing is not about the human rights of these workers, but more about them taking the jobs mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than understanding the human yeah, conditions. I mean, uh, one of my, I think uh, recently there was an article maybe about six months ago, just before the oil price started going down, right, is they were bringing in a lot of foreign workers, and uh, some of the workers in the oil fields in Alberta were very concerned because these foreign workers, all they wanted to do was work, mm -hmm. uh, because, of course, if they didn't work or the employer didn't like them, they could just can cancel their contract and send them home. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what these guys were doing is they were not following proper health and safety uh, protocols, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, okay, well, the boss said just do it, right? Mm -hmm. And that was happening, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like we're bringing back to the days of when we brought Chinese workers mm -hmm. to build the railway tracks and said, hey, here, you know, you want your fam you want to bring your family over? If you put that dynamite in the mountain, mm -hmm. you know, you might get a $1,000 uh, bonus for it. And that's kind of the situation we're ba almost coming back to. Yeah, yeah. And some things have uh, uh, philosophically haven't changed. It's just no. changed the forms. Right? It's just changed the form. The, the practice and stuff is there. It's just that the way implemented is a little bit more polished. So you look like it's something is right. Yeah. Before we go on a commercial break, uh, I want to ask you about public service employees, right? right. Uh, you know, there is a lot of perceptions and myths about public service. I mean, you <laughs> represent public service. Absolutely. Well. Can you take us? I think we take a lot of the hit on that, but yeah. but we have to the public and everybody has to remember we are employees. Mm -hmm. We are the employer because we pay the tax for those, yeah. and we are also the customers in this because we receive some of the services the public service uh, provides. Okay. Give you an example, you know, your driver's license, right? We drive cars, we get, yeah. so we get, a, we as a customer, we get that. We pay the taxes that employs those MTO people. And we're the people that provide those driver's licenses. Mm -hmm. so, we're, so we're in a three-way partnership. Uh, so in some ways, we're a stakeholder in every aspect of those mm -hmm. public services. I'm sure we'll continue on that. Yeah, no, definitely. So um, uh, the, the general consensus around, around uh, what's happening currently around precarious nature, less pay, uh, not stable jobs, yeah. not quality jobs is, is all uh, contextualized. But I want to ask about, are we making progress? Are we going backward? Is it something that we've seen uh, happening throughout or is it something that we are seeing that uh, that it's, it's predominantly happening during this part of the human life in Canada? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, we are going backward. And I think for many years we're, we recognize the fact that uh, 
a lot of workers had to do this kind of fight. Mm -hmm. um, they had to get up there and whether they're, they're putting pressure and, and, and the government are they're working together in their community or, or with the union to make these changes. We, we see where a lot of that role led to people organizing in union just to have um, fairness. And so now we see slowly as people demand decent standard, these businesses are just packing up and they're going somewhere else to exploit others. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's not much difference there. There's, there are students that, that are graduating with huge debt that mm -hmm. don't see anywhere that they're going to get any jobs to match the, these field that they're mm -hmm. coming from yeah. as well. So we see, we see children that are out there in poverty. We see the healthcare system that are loaded with people with poor health because they just can't yeah. um, feed themselves properly as well. So. Uh, we're so not really moving up yeah. and really acknowledging that they are their progress. It's really going backwards. backwards. So yeah. we used to get good jobs with high school diploma before. Now the first degree is often not enough. Mm -hmm. right. That people have to still continue and have yeah. huge burdens before they start getting a decent job yeah. if they do. So we'll take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll actually start talking about what needs to change. Practices, policies, what needs to change, right? So. Uh, let's take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we'll talk about uh, the changes that we need to have. Welcome back. You're watching Crossroads with Nathan Shan. In today's episode, we're marking uh, May Day, a day for workers, a day to celebrate, recognize uh, the contribution of workers and the struggles that workers go through. So we had talked a bit about uh, the challenges uh, the workforce, the workers face in Canada, uh, whether it's precarious nature, pay, safety, stability, and so on. Uh, let's talk about what needs to change, what needs to be done more, or what needs to be changed, both in policy but also in practice. So let's start with Beji. Okay. Say so I would say first that, you know, the philosophy of the government when the government uh, you know work in place so that they need to be changed and for this part I would say they er, like earlier part we talked about the precarious low wage yeah, unstable you know no protect it's all you know it's um, created by the system you know by the legal frame you know it doesn't really protect us strong in, uh, strong protection for workers that's why allow those uh, business, you know, take advantage of those weak, you know, laws, or weak enforcement, and then put the workers in the precarious situation, put it in the low wage situation to work and become the working poor. Mm -hmm. So we need a very strong, you know, protection and it's like a systematically, you know, to challenge those precarious, you know, the, the cause, the root cause, which cause the precarity for workers, mm -hmm. to challenge, you know, those uh, business as a whole, you know, or system, which, you know, creates, you know, the low wage, you know, all those bad things we talked about earlier. So what would the, what would the protection look like? So what a protection we need to say, so we need, we need to uh, talk about, you know, when government should, uh, let's say, first it will say labor law, so which is a floor protection for all the workers, non-unionized workers, unionized workers, and migrant workers, all should be, get the same protection. Mm -hmm. Now we get, a, Deliberately being separated right now, the workforce can separate the unionized, non unionized, and migrant workers. So they treat it differently. So then they will pit the workers against each other. Mm -hmm. So that's really, it's very, I would say, very mm -hmm. brilliant design in a way. Well, uh, yeah, well, that, uh, that's, that's something I wanted to also get to. You know, this, uh, I might be considered conspiracy theorist if I say <laughs> divide and rule policy, but it seems like. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why we are moving backward is that the struggles are not being united. Uh, people are being pitted against each other, you know, unionized workers, you know, people who are making minimum wage uh, are complaining about somebody who's only making maybe two, three dollars more than them. Yeah. People living in community housing and people living in co-op housing and rent pitting against each other, uh, mm -hmm. the reasons for, uh, for the systemic failure, right? Yeah. Is that something that can change or is it changing? Are we seeing uh, any, any form? And uh, is that something that needs to happen? It, 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 it's a change that needs to happen. Um, we, as people continue fighting each other, uh, you see clearly that there is something that's wrong. You see where 
people are going nowhere but the bottom. And as they're at the bottom, they also look at their neighbors and think, you know, why should you be any better off? Mm -hmm. So it's just driving to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the only way we can have some of these changes is making sure that one, um, for example, uh, a, a worker, that's how they're making decent wages. And then suddenly they're, they're then turned over to a, 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 a another employer who only want to pay cheap wages. Mm -hmm. I think we need to have some some saying to that where they need to stop. Mm -hmm. It's not about the, the person who now can take care of that business best. It's someone who is saying, if you turn your business over to me, you know, um, I will uh, at a cheaper rate, then, then they turn around with the expense of slashing workers' wages to half the amount. Um, we see a, a lot of people out there who it's difficult paying rent. The mm -hmm. children, they're grown up, they're adults, and they can't leave home mm -hmm. to even find their own space as well. And so as they pit at and each other, people it's easier for people looking at each other going, you have and I don't, mm -hmm. rather than looking at what's happening in terms of um, when employer, as they, get, uh, as they get bigger and as they get richer, mm -hmm. the only way they see is exploiting worker mm -hmm. and they have no way of going so whether you're but in there's the no union, face to that uh, that mm -hmm. employer right there's, there's no, no face uh, so so we just tend yes. to look around us and make the connection yeah. because we know the minimum wage for example and the all over paying jobs are mostly in big multinational multinational uh, yeah. right, right so. we we have uh, and and again like when we when we have employers that are making 400 billion a year and r refuse to even pay their worker more than eleven dollars, mm -hmm. which is is terrible. They're they're huge empire, and so they're not even looking at paying a decent uh, living for people in the city, a living wage. They're not doing that, and the competition. So as they get larger, they get larger globally, mm -hmm. and so the pressure is there where they're saying no to to make sure we look good. Mm -hmm. Everybody need to stay. The wage need to be done. We are not poor, but this is the way, and 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 that's when. We see the bidding of the contract. We see worker who go to bargaining table and, and ask for better wages, but yet that employer would come back and say, no, I, I want to look at the future worker and just slash wages for people coming in. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about their children and their grandchildren as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So yeah. I, I want to, you can carry on with that yeah. too, but I also want to touch a bit because we talked a lot of pay yeah. related stuff. I want to talk a bit about safety. Yeah, well. so, so you know, let's look at it this way. I think one of the, I just want to continue a little bit on this because if we look at um, the way that you're right about how it, the employees are pitting the union against the non-unionized workers. So let's look at Toronto. In the last four years when Rob Ford was mayor, you know, the biggest thing, one of the biggest things that happened was a privatization of the garbage collection. And one of the things they kept saying was, well, you know, these unionized workers are paid too much and all that stuff, so we need to privatize it, make it cheaper. It doesn't cost the city any less, right? What has happened is it's transferred that money that the lower wage now person is earning into the hands of a middleman who has mm -hmm. probably contributed some election funding mm -hmm. uh, campaign for one of the uh, people there, the players there. So it doesn't, but it's benefit, it's taking out a whole chunk of people's livelihood, right? Uh, and the new guys that are coming in are making less money for the same kind of work where they, they should have. Give you my personal example, for example, to just to demonstrate how we've been sliding backwards. So in 1989-90, when I was a student in university, I actually worked as a security guard on the weekends. And back then, my wage rate, I went into the job, and the guy said, oh, you know, we'll, we'll pay you eight bucks an hour. And I thought that was great, because minimum wage was 475. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend said, no, 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 go tell him we can, we're going to do the next job, mm -hmm. right? There were jobs there. And so I said, no, I don't want it. And he said, no, we'll make you, oh, hang on, hang on, don't go. We'll, if you let me see what I can do for you. I ended up making a, I think 12 or 12.50 an hour. Mm -hmm. But that let me go through university. Right now, uh, pr and, but then a course for a fee for a, uh, a tuition course was $400. Mm -hmm. Now it's almost $1,200. Mm -hmm. And the student is still making that 12 bucks an hour, 11, 12 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And part of it is the politicians have been successful in saying, we need to break the unions because they're making, making too much. Mm -hmm. Because a non-unionized worker who is making $11 see his tax dollars mm -hmm. and saying, oh, you know, those guys are making $18, $20 an hour, so therefore my tax dollars are being wasted by those guys, which is really not the case. Mm -hmm. It's just the inefficiencies in the system mm -hmm. that's 
uh, wasting the tax dollars, mm -hmm. not that guy who's making twenty dollars an hour. And I think I think one of the one of the difficulties for students, for example, Jins brought it up, yeah. uh, is that a lot of the student jobs are now migrant immigrant jobs, right? Because the immigrants and Ex international exactly. trained professionals aren't able to find the jobs. So the security guards and the Tim Hortons and all those things That's have right. become uh, more regular jobs than than part time, than student part -time or student, student jobs, jobs that yeah. used to be traditional, right? And, and part of the things that we're seeing is the taking away of the skill, right? Or most of the employers are now breaking down a job, so there's no skill involved. Very few skill trades, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just bringing anybody who can uh, do this and go. Mm -hmm. I, I want to come to you quickly because Worker Section Center has done a lot of work around temp agencies and also um, around you know uh, making sure that people are being paid for what they are owed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you know the bad bosses and so on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so w what enforcement is something that that you've been pushing for a better enforcement, right? Yeah. Is that happening? Because sometimes we have these legislations, but you go into workplaces, um, you, you see right in front of your eyes that you know those legislations are right off the roof and nothing is being followed, right? So mm -hmm. is 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 there a push for legislations to have a better, um, quicker? Enforcement. Yeah, we are always have trying to do that part. So there is a little bit of progress, you know, on the enforcement. However, it's not enough, you know. And in the past, so there was like a, because when you enforce, you need the people, you need people to do the work, you need to put, uh, you know, money, the resources. So that part, so the government is really, really don't want to put the money there. And so that once, so they have very, very limited, uh, you know, hands there to enforce the law. And also the determination, the government don't have enough you know, determination to really stop, you know, those bad bosses who broke the law. So that's why they end up, we have uh, law, you know, on the paper, but we don't have, uh, you know, the protection uh, reality. So that's... But, uh, but on the other side too, do, <coughs> do employees who have difficulties with the bosses have... Uh, f you know, affordable legal support that's time sensitive that can be achieved too, right? So, because most of the time, it's not worth it to challenge something because you know that it's going to be a long mm -hmm. uh, process, yes. time-wise, but also you know it's going to be expensive process. Yeah. So. Yes. Yes. Actually, which, which right, right now, if you file a complaint at the Ministry of Labor, so for the workers, it's very difficult because they have to wait. And also, even employer get the fund that, you know, violate the law, uh, get the order to pay, and they should have paid, you know, long time ago, they were already old, you know? So, and all, in other sense, they don't have any de uh, punishment, mm -hmm. you know? So the employer by the law can, you know, can get a waste, mm -hmm. no, no any consequence. Uh, so that's a, a problem with the enforcement. Before we go to the break, and last part, we'll talk a bit more specifically about some of the campaigns and initiatives. But I want to talk a bit about uh, union advantage, and if you can take us through. Because a lot of the time I talk to people, they say, you know, uh, my son wants to be this, or my daughter wants to be this, or when people are talking about jobs they want, yeah. most of the time it's unionized jobs that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's, it's, it's a good pay, decent, standard quality of job because it's, unionized in many places in, in some countries like for t whether it's teaching or paramedics or you, you name most of the like firefighters and any uh, public service jobs and so on are, are have the union protection right yes but that doesn't translate when it comes to solidarity when the union yes. yeah. so how do you bridge this awareness gap and um, and, and how, how is union one of the false uh, one of the uh, drawbacks is also unions inability to connect in making that communication to the general public too, right? Yeah. What, did, what could be done through that? Um, I think, I, I mean, if you look at some of the, the issues that's happening right now in terms of uh, low wages, the, the, the um, precarious job, and that's where unions come in from, right? Um, we used to have healthcare workers, whether they're construction workers, um, that was out there making low wages, no protection, and, and once they were unionized, the union was able to to bargain for those changes. Um, people, we have people out there right now who can't retire. They're just working, working because there's no pension, mm -hmm. and so that's where the union was able to do so. And unfortunately, for someone who's struggling out there, uh, and not them, but someone who put that in their head that it's mm -hmm. the union is the problem. No, union meaning that w with um, having mm -hmm. a union there mean that 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 that's changes. That that's changes for decent living. It's not about greed. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's unfortunately somebody who will have to advocate for you to, to have those changes as well. And I think this is what uh, we need to be out there talking to to people about that, and, uh, you know, union is really a, a way, a door to make sure people have in decent living. Mm -hmm. There's no other way. There's no employer um, that walk up to a, a worker and said, you know, you did a good job for the last four years. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give you a good wage. Mm -hmm. They're not doing it. And people are losing their job over and over, even to ask for a raise mm -hmm. or ask for, for health care. So we, want, we don't want to be painted as the greedy bunch are, are, are the bad guys. It's really about uh, prosperity. And, and so it's lifting the standard of living. It's up, lifting uh, standard. <laughs> because if, if union, it was working people who was struggling farm union to make those changes. And so that's what we want to send the message out there. And this is why history is important too. Yeah. Uh, having the weekends or having 40 that's hours right. only and all this stuff are, are given for us. Yes. But there were struggles for previous generations. Right. right. Like when my kids were born, you know, the maternity leave was six months. Right six now months, it's yeah. a year. Yeah. I mean, to add to your further point, yes, you know, the unions, uh, they've got complacent at some point uh, and we were, there was not solidarity. Yeah. I think we're beginning to see that come back mm -hmm. with the election of Hassan Yusuf as the Canadian Labour Congress president. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, I would say maybe even five years ago, was that the unions were not engaging young workers, they were not engaging workers of color, mm -hmm. uh, and they, because they were like, we were comfortable, we were, you know, where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that the unions are under attack, unions are now beginning to renew themselves. So mm -hmm. you know, if you look around your community now, you will see in the subways or on your bus or a bus stop, you'll see different union uh, advertisements, like what yeah. unions are offering yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, uh, Reaching out to diverse population and yeah. youth is on the only way it can stay relevant, right? Right, e exactly. So, exactly. Let's uh, take a quick uh, commercial break now. Uh, the last segment we'll be talking particularly about specific initiatives that uh, that is happening right now and we should take place as well. Mm -hmm. So please stay tuned. You're watching Crossroads with Nathan Shan. We, uh, we are talking about May Day, uh, recognizing the contribution workers make, um, talking about the struggles of workers as well. When we uh, remember uh, the workers' struggles, we also kind of pay tribute to the uh, you know many, many, many workers who have died in the workplaces, who have actually sacrificed mm -hmm. fighting for rights as well. So it's, uh, this show is also partly a tribute uh, show to the workers and, uh, and their sacrifices. So let's go into what we need to do and now in terms of initiatives. Um, you must be busy with the Labour Council, uh, different campaigns and so on. Can you take yeah. us through some of the things that are happening at the Labour yeah. Council? So, um, recently the, we, there was an announcement by the Ontario government to uh, again um, have some consultation done around changes in the workplace. And so the, the Labour Council is working with uh, unions and we are hoping that we can also make the connection with community about uh, um, uh, the things that's happening in workplace that need to change. And that's um, coming back to some of the things that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. So one of that is to look at how we can strengthen labor laws, mm -hmm. uh, how we can work with uh, other groups as well, um, community groups as well, to look at what's happening in employment standard as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, there's a lot of things. We, we know people are out there laid off without jobs or, or, or so often that doesn't have jobs. And so we have to look at how we can work with our allies as well to, to send that message to the government that the money that's in EI, it's mm -hmm. for working people, and so mm -hmm. they need to go back yeah, to them yeah, as people well. People contribute yes. uh, those dollars and then not, not be able to access it. And yes. Yeah, and again, I, I think as we, we, we've, we look at these kind of uh, laws out there, we also want to put the attention as well and so that's another work that we're doing with the strikers and, and uh, just example of the, the, the crown workers mm -hmm. that's out there uh, for the last 20 months, mm -hmm. over two winters, um, fighting for, for a decent contract. They're out there on that picket line and uh, nothing being done and we want to raise awareness that mm -hmm. there are times when the government legislate back to work and in this case we want them to also look at workers we are employer turn their back on. Mm -hmm. How do you legislate them back to the table to, to, to settle those contracts rather than making sure at the end of the day, this, uh, the, uh, after six months of strike, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. when you have a labor dispute, the employer can can just fire everyone. Uh -huh. And so they're just out there and we want to push as well to make sure that it doesn't happen to anyone else. Mm -hmm. There need to be some changes to that as well. Okay. We'll come and discuss some of those parts uh, in more detail. Let's uh, hear some of the campaigns the Workers Action Center is. Okay, so thing. currently we have a campaign. It's uh, $15 and the fairness. Yeah. $15, with probably we, everybody knows it's for $15 minimum wage. So which means we bring people 10%, bring workers 10%. The minimum standard is 10% above poverty line. Mm -hmm. So the fairness, so it's talk about we, the people need decent hours, they have enough hours that they can live on, mm -hmm. and also means they need to have paid sick days. So we demand uh, seven days a year for all the workers, regardless uh, you know, where you work, the, all the workers need. Mm -hmm. And also we uh, demand you know, respect at the work. Mm -hmm. Now, if I stand up, so for many workers, if they don't have a union at a, uh, at a workplace, if they stand up you know, uh, for their rights, they probably will to get fired. No law can protect them. Mm -hmm. And also, we, want, we fight for the rules that can protect all the workers, mm -hmm. protect this, provide the same protection for migrant workers, for non-unionized workers, for unionized workers, treat all the workers the same protection. So that's our current campaign. So we launched last uh, week mm -hmm. on April 15. So in Toronto, across Ontario, actually, which also is a global day of Fight for 15. Mm -hmm. The, all over the world, the, there are 60,000 workers get involved f from all the world, 35 countries, 20, uh, 250 cities. Oh, yeah? Nice, yes. Nice. So I know, I know there is a, a bit of skepticism around this. Uh, you know, the, the organizing is what led to minimum wage increase. Yes. Um, you know, uh, every time there was a huge organizing politically mm -hmm. that led to governments trying to make sure there is something that's given. But it's also, I don't want to sound cynical, but it's also like by the time you do $10 minimum wage campaign, it takes five, six years for them to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And then $10, what you're asking becomes, uh, you know, not so. So you have to constantly have to keep asking, even though it's tied into inflation now, uh, until people are brought out to poverty, I'm assuming, right? So mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you keep, I mean, this is more of a, uh, activist personality question: How do you keep your uh, sanity How when do you fight fight this kind of a thing? See, where you know you constantly have to go back to a different number to push it to happen. It's, you 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 put this very well, actually, very good. So actually, our the whole economy today is a very antagonism system, right? We have have an antagonism economy. Just talk, you talk, and uh, you hear the, the workers being eaten by those business. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So for workers. Everything is constantly fight. That's mm -hmm. true. That's the nature of the of the economy. Mm -hmm. It's a, no any rights worker we have today is being given. It's mm -hmm. always a fight through mm -hmm. previous generations, the unions, the labors, all fight. Mm -hmm. So today we still have to keep the fight on. Mm -hmm. We cannot just well, live good, the same. Good for you because there are a lot of people who feel that it could be just done by meetings in in uh, at certain tables. That alone will not happen. Your campaigns are pretty. Mm -hmm. effective and it's doing, it's, uh, doing amazing work. So I want to come to specifically about Tamil community because yep. this, this is a show that's going airing in a Tamil television and I want to contextualize a bit. Right. Um, you know, in our communities now, um, you know, if you can benchmark some of the economic growth, you could see a bit of growth in our community in terms of the type of houses, the type of cars, or yes. type of jobs and so on, right? But yeah. at the same time, it also creates an image that the other problems of minimum wage related or workplace related or poverty related stuff do not exist, exist right? So, so how do we yeah. deal with so, that? So you know, you're right, and our community has made tremendous progress, there's no doubt about it, right? Um, so what's happened is we've, there are the ones that have made it, and there are the ones that have not been able to make it, they're the ones that are still struggling. So yes, you know, our, a lot of our community members, if you look at, go to a uh, gala that one of our community organizations have, yeah, the tickets are 100 $150, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are people that are still making those minimum wages. Mm -hmm. People that are still struggling to put their kids through a school to have that education, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you look at, I think, uh, maybe about five years ago, they looked at all the restaurants mm -hmm. and came up with this analysis that if all the Tamils working in the restaurants in Toronto went on strike, more than 50% of the restaurants would have to close down. Mm -hmm. 
right? That's those are still the precarious nature of the work of uh, the people are in. Newspaper uh, delivery. Newspaper are in. I mean, just you know, today you will see an ad on yeah. TVI with all the real estate agents that are making it, and there some of them are struggling too, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's where we need to lo work. Majority, for example, let's look at. A majority of our uh, talent people, men are employed in the trucking industry. Mm -hmm. If you look at those people, le uh, employment law clearly states that if you're working for one employer or driving a truck for one employer, you are an employee. Mm -hmm. Yet the trucking company is able to get away by saying, no, you're an independent contractor, mm -hmm. right? And yet they work for two, three years just for that one person yep. being paid by the mile. Yep. Um, they're, not, they're making more money because they're working twice, thrice as hard. How, so, I mean, a few years back, talking about some of these issues would have been easier because there was not that higher layer of, uh, of wealth that right. was of